by the time you're listening to this, it is almost here. And we ask this question every year. How excited are you for the World Championship this year and Dartsmouth season to begin? Oh, is that starting this week? Yeah, I thought I'd let you know just on this show. Oh, I, I thought we were here to talk about the nine darter today at Modus and the 10 darter on the bull. Uh, wow. OK, <laughs> e- even better. We have some world championships to discuss. I don't think I'll ever be as excited as I was, golly, three years ago now, because just 2020 was such a awful year around the world. And especially since there was that big wave of COVID in December, which is why it went from only one day having a crowd to uh, being the rest of the tournament behind closed doors, like most of the events in 2020 had been. I don't think I'll ever be as excited as I was for that, because just to have something to get rid of the monotony of another lockdown, another uh, just weeks behind closed doors of in my personal life, just to be able to have the darts to look forward to is so refreshing. And I, I'm certainly looking forward to the world championships, especially since we just had our first snow of the winter um, last night here. So I'm looking forward to it, but I don't think anything will ever compare to, at least I hope nothing will compare to my excitement three years ago. I'm still very excited and we'll get to Luke Humphrey's um, a bunt a bit in this show. But now having won three of the last four majors, including the last two and coming in as the favorite to see Luke Humphreys for the first time at a world championship as the man to beat. The first time actually at a Sky event where he enters it as the favorite. He wasn't the favorite entering the uh, Grand Slam. He was amongst the favorites, but I think he was the third favorite entering that. So this is now the first time he enters a Sky major as the favorite. And but obviously, this is Luke Humphrey's first time entering as a major champion to the world championships and as the favorite for the world championships. And that's something to see how he's going to carry that burden that I'm looking forward to see. I don't I don't think it's going to stop him. It didn't stop him in mine head. It didn't stop him in the latter stages when he became the favorite in the Grand Slam of darts. And I don't think it's going to stop him in the world championships. That's not to say he's going to win it. He can be beaten. Michael Van Guren came very close to beating him in the Players' Championship Finals a couple weeks ago. So a performance like that might beat him. But he's not going to be stopped just by the pressure. He's still going to perform. He's still going to be putting in those 100, 102, 104 averages, match in, match out. Because I don't think the pressure matters to him. And But I want to see that because this is the biggest event. I want to see how some of the players who've really upped their games this year, some of whom who have tough draws, which we'll get to, how they handle the world championship. Stephen Bunting's had, I believe, his best season in the PDC, but he'll have a very tough second round matchup against either Ryan Joyce, who's just won his second title recently, or Alex Spellman, who is the, probably the best player on the CDC circuit for the last 18 months. Uh, you look at uh, Dave Chisnell, uh, who's going to have to come very early in the tournament going against Cameron Menzies, who when he performs, could average north of 100, or Rusty Jake Rodriguez, who just went through the qualifier, as well as to see how the world champion does for the first time entering the world championships as the world champion. He has an advantage that the players that he's going against will have already played in that same session, but he has a tough draw. And then as we get into the latter stages to see whether there'll just be as many ton plus averages, 104, 105, as we've seen the more recently from the top players over the past few months. This is a world championship where I think we might see maybe not a record of a 109 in a final broken or a tournament average of 105 broken, things that Phil Taylor had done in the past, but maybe the overall tournament average will be higher than it's been since it's expanded to 96 players. The number of uh, ton plus averages from the last 32 on, I could see getting beaten because there are just so many players who are playing so well right now. So I'm looking forward to see whether the standard we've seen in 2023 continues into the 2024 World Championships. And I'm also excited to see how this year's emergent players play in the biggest event. Yeah, I can't argue with that. I'm very excited as well. And for me, I can only imagine what it's like to be one of those 96 players in the field at this moment in time. They're going to be making that walk out to the stage at Ali Pali, playing in the tournament itself. And the darts at Ali Pali over Christmas, it has become a, an annual tradition now for, for a lot of people. And it transcends beyond the darts community, but a, a much bigger audience as well. We see more and more people watching this tournament 
every single year. And we're coming into this year's World Championship off the back of a, another season where we have seen new first time major winners. It extends that pool of players in the lineup that have been there and done it. Maybe not in this particular tournament, but in a major with the cameras, with the crowds, the huge prize money on the line. And we've also seen new names get to the latter stages as well, put themselves at the forefront and say, I'm going to be the next one in line. I'm going to be the next one to win one of these major titles. And a, a name you mentioned there, he's the name on everyone's lips at the moment going into this tournament. I'm sure we'll be talking about him plenty over the next hour or so. And that is Luke Humphreys. He's won three of the last four majors in such impressive fashion as well. But we're not the only ones that have used the phrase MVG-esque to describe some of his performances in recent weeks. But at the time of recording, he does go in as that pre-tournament favourite at three to one. So we have got a PDC World Championship where we have got a new name as the pre-tournament favourite because you think back how often down the years has it been Phil Taylor going in as the favourite or Michael Van Gerwen. So from that aspect, it does add a, another layer of excitement to it. And I look at some of the names that are going to be playing in this event for the first time as well, such as Luke Littler, 16 years old, but there's so much talk and hype around him at the moment. What could he potentially do over the next few weeks? And yeah, for, for me, I just can't wait for it to get started now. And uh, a side note as well, this year's tournament starting on a Friday night for us here in the UK. You can't ask for a better start than that. You finish work on the Friday afternoon, you get home, enjoy the darts Friday night, and then you go into the weekend. You've got two sessions Saturday, two sessions on the Sunday. So plenty of enjoying the darts to do very early on in this tournament. That's a, a great way to get things started.